I'm going to start with my um, or our presentation by Mikowai, Kostirko, and myself. Um, works. So what we did was um, we asked 220 universities within Europe, limiting it to Europe, um, what they think of digital archaeology and how would they teach it. Or we tried to find, particularly my Mikowai, tried to find um, anyone in Europe that would teach something like uh, digital archaeology. And um, we started, sent out a questionnaire to these and you saw you see, we got about 40 replies, which is about 20%. Um, most of them um, came from, let's see how that works, came from um, the UK, Germany, and Poland. Um, some lesser from other countries, but unfortunately, we didn't get any replies from um, mostly in Southeastern Europe. So we'd be very happy um, if. Anybody knows someone um, to send this questionnaire directly to people who are involved with teaching digital, digital and parenthesis um, archaeology um, to get more replies on that. I'm anyway going to show you a bit of the results that we had from um, these uh, replies. Okay. Like that. So you notice. Um, Um, there we go. Um, the, the questions were open and specific. So we had questions such as, how do you understand the term digital archaeology? Just giving them um, a, like the possibility to answer whatever they think it is. And you notice most of them are really talking about methods, saying, oh, well, this is GIS, this is statistics, computer simulations. Um, few actually answered and well we have to rethink archaeology or we have to understand newly um, what is archaeology through digital archaeology of course the CAA was mentioned uh, as well as being like whatever is taught at the, or being presented at the CAA is digital archaeology um, from specific um, questions like what topics should be covered in a course called digital archaeology it was pretty pretty much the range of what we see at the CAA. Um, one thing um, that was particularly like a bit critical uh, saying was how to teach the relation, I, I quote down here, um, an, an answer, how to teach the relation between archaeological data processing and sociocultural interpretations that is meant in digital archaeology. Processing archaeological data is quite easy to teach, but not in the sense what the data shows, but how can I use data to create narration about the past? So actually, the interpretation of data, again, is the difficult part of digital archaeology. Um, all these, um, this range of answers put into um, specific uh, terms would be, we have a part on collect collecting data and processing it, processing it, formatting and storage, interpretation, and outreach. And very few gave the um, information that it was about theory on digital archaeology. Um, then we asked, and I'm sorry that it's, it's being moved a bit, I guess this, this, um, um, yeah, this font is not really accepted by this community. <laughs> um, anyway, um, you see here the specific questions, we always gave them answers already where they had to pick answers, what is being taught on pretty much um, data uh, recording and processing, taking data, storing it, and then more advanced stuff like uh, programming, um, using software, uh, or, uh, writing software, and um, um, computational programming. So you notice already the, the, the change here, it's like everybody pretty much the answer um, is using digital re field recording, teaching digital field recording, um, or digital databases, and very few uh, concentrate on actually the, the hard stuff, I would say. Um, it's the same with this question, which of the following methods have been taught regularly at your university? You see the emphasis again on digital field recording and um, digital databases with very little programming. That continues on 
Um, how are they being um, taught? You notice there's a um, particular emphasis on lectures, so frontal teaching, and um, exercises, so hands-on work um, are taking most of the um, <laughs> or a, a part of most of the courses. Um, there are few only seminars that dedicate um, that are dedicated to digital archaeology, so where you actually have discussions on the topic. Um, again, when which of the following methods are compulsory within the archaeology curriculum? You notice um, compulsory are mostly again these two, and very little is on the stuff that we emphasize so much on at um, the CAA. So that is something I think we can discuss later as well. Um, what stage of learning are these topics being offered? Mostly it starts already in undergraduate uh, studies and then postgraduate and master studies is as well um, quite <coughs> prominent. I mean, many, very few, I guess very few universities actually offer doctoral studies or some kind of um, program within the PhD. How are these topics incorporated? Mostly as a single course. I guess most of us know that teaching, GIS teaching, um, simulation teaching a certain specific topic. Um, weirdly, even though Tour, Cologne, um, um, Leiden answered questions, we didn't get a specialized master reply. I know that was misunderstood in the question. Um, we expected at least a few universi universities to, um, to, to have that as a possibility on uh, teaching digital um, archaeology. Then, um, what software is used? Mainly open source. <laughs> of these, what kind of software is being taught? Of course, we kind of expected um, that mainly the GIS um, uh, software, very little of the others are um, uh, being taught. However, you have to see, choose no, no more than two. We just wanted to have people answer like quickly out of their mind, what are we teaching to, to of course, at some universities, there will be a whole range of different um, software and programs being taught. Then, however, which of the following program languages are being taught? The main column is none. Um, however, you see Python, R, and HTML are in, in a number of um, these um, institutes being taught. How is the institution planning to achieve this goal? By, oh, I, I, I missed a question here. That was like, how are you going to improve um, or uh, yeah, make digital archaeology more prominent? And here was the answer, um, relatively um, clear on hiring quali qualified staff. So we all can be can cheer up on that. Hopefully, there will be more positions available at some point. And also cooperating with technical institutes, um, which I guess is also a, a clever move. Um, on, on this, having um, spe specialists on this topic, I'm not. I don't think I have the time anymore to actually go into detail with teaching issues. We had an open question again. Some answered it. Um, like particularly, one thing is was interesting um, by, by by Rachel. Um, she she answered as you have to make a difference between once this uh, new um, or the, the digital and computational archaeology and the um, digital, um, well, more leaning to um, media um, data, digital archaeology. So we have once the programming and on the other side, the, the, the work with um, yeah, data as a, as, a, as a media, as a presentation um, for the public. Um, and then a question, one, one answer was there is not enough equipment. So we need, do need more money to get actually students uh, interested and offering them all the possibilities that there are to um, teach digital archaeology. Well, this is pretty much it from my side. Um, we would like to thank everyone who answered. And if you haven't done that, answered our questionnaire, um, please uh, do so. Um, contact us, Mikko Y or me, and uh, we can I see there's a lot of people in the room. Um, we can provide you with a questionnaire if your university 
is the red a red dot without a name on it here. Um, thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.